So first, thank you a lot for welcoming me in, uh, in Portugal, in Lisboa. It's an honor to be, uh, to be with you here. I'm French. I don't know, you can hear with my strong accent, probably. Uh, so I, yes, I am Maxime Loger, so I'm in charge of Southwest. Southwest is a bunch of, and I think I understood what you said, it's a bunch of different countries, different culture. You have, uh, uh, of course, Portugal, you have uh, France, Italy, Spain, uh, and Benelux. So it's a bunch of different cultures, and we will see that for the public sector, it's even, I think, more important. Um, so today I will try to, I would say, reflect a little bit what we do in the public sector. So it's not about UI pass, it's more about okay, what we are doing for the public sector uh, in my region and abroad, and you will have also Glenn uh, that will give us, I would say, a little bit more, I would say, concrete stuff. Ah, okay. So today, I click, I don't know. Is it this one? Yes. So you talk, ah, oh, sorry. Okay. I think uh, if I uh, understand correctly, you are talking about RPA in the process automation. So um, long story short, UiPath born in 2005, Romania, Bucharest. Why it's important? Because it's a European company at the beginning, so it means that they do understand and we do understand the specificities of the European market. So that's not, I would say, something uh, usual in the software industry. RPA, we are born RPA, but RPA means for a lot of you here, back office automation. So it's not so fancy, it's uh, from, I would say, 15 years ago. Huh? We did that many, many years ago. And now we are talking about, I would say, a business automation platform. So what is a business automation platform? It's the capacity to automate, to automate, sorry, I'm speaking a little bit Portuguese here, to automate uh, some different, I would say, activities you can have. So it can be process mining, communication mining, AI, testing, etc. Everything is about automation. And what is important is we started by with back office, but now you can do front office automation and you can deliver a lot of different components. This is important because it will impact for sure all your industry, depending what you do, different departments, finance, HR, but it's very important, I do believe, to consider automation and not RPA anymore, if I may. Because RPA, it's back office automation and we move, I think, to another, I would say, uh, era or to another horizon that will give us a little bit more flexibility. So on the public sector, um, it's, it's actually for me it was a big discovery. I joined UiPass two years and a half ago. And two years and a half ago, I didn't know what was automation, even what was RPA. And the first, actually, industry I met was the public sector. And I would like, I would say, just to congratulate you because you are the most dynamic sector in the automation space. And I can tell you, in, I've, I worked for Salesforce, for IBM, for many different software. Public is not the most dynamic. But here, in automation, uh, it's a very, very dynamic sector. For us, it's almost more than 2,000 public customers, so it's a lot. If you compare to other software industries, you will see that the share of the public sector in the automation space is pretty high, and we will, uh, and I would say, uh, I will articulate why. And one specificity also is how to deliver faster results. We all know that uh, when you work in a public organization, you are linked to election, you are linked to budget, two, three years, depending on the country. So, uh, again, it will be different in Portugal, in France, etc. And we know that it's very important when you receive some funds from the Europe, Europe, for example, that you have to show results in, your, I would say, this amount of time. And you will see that it's very specific to the public sector compared to what we can see in other areas. This, you know that better than me, your priorities. Priorities, I would say about education, about health, everything is, I would say, quite simple to understand, but at the end, we talk about the citizen. And what is better than having, I would say, happy agents to serve and to have happy citizens at the end? So we, I believe, this is my belief, that we need to keep this link and never forget that now citizens are more and more demanding because everything is digital, we all have our iPhones or Samsung or whatever, we are digitally connected. So the service you are providing 
whatever the area, needs to be as fast as, I would say, our own experience in the private sector. And we cannot forget that, because if we forget that, we will forget the young people on the education, we will forget the people who need to be uh, in the health sector, who need to have some medical care, etc. But you know that better than me. So, at the end, but you all know that, we need to, I would say, transform digitally your systems. It's pretty, pretty easy. But you do have a legacy. And I, will, I just want to point it out two things. Things you know, but things we don't talk about because we are a little bit ashamed of it. Two things very specific. One thing is you only have custom dev legacy system. You don't have SAP, you don't have Oracle. So at the end of the day, if you want to be agile, you need to deal with it. And it's a big difference compared to the other market. So it means that the, I would say, the capacity to make your legacy system more agile, it would be, uh, I would say, a little bit more difficult. The second thing I would like to point out is a decision process. Why? Because your budget are scrutinized by the government in France, in Spain, in Portugal, in Italy, in Benelux, everywhere in the world, perhaps a little bit less in the US than it is in Europe. Uh, and the decision process is pretty long. So when you want to make a decision, it can take one year one year and a half. And we have to think about this when we want to move uh, and to transform digitally our experience. So I believe is that automation will give you the capacity, I would say, to move from a slow digital transformation, and this is what we do for many public customers, to, I would say, digital transformation, but I would, more fast. But what I mean for that is automation is not, I would say, the answer is the agility layer to help you to do it. So it's not the only answer, it's just some capacity to be more agile. So I'm not saying that this is, you know, a kind of a, the magic dream, no. But this is the agility layer, when I'm talking to any CIO of a public sector organization, they used to use automation as a bandage. It's not working, I need to try to fix things, I'm putting automation. And now more and more, we are thinking about automation by design. Meaning, instead of thinking about automation to, I would say, fix things that are not working, we are thinking with actually our partners, with, uh, they can be Devo Team and other partners, but we are thinking before what, can, what automation can bring in our digital transformation. How are we gonna achieve, I would say, better results using automation and on the, I would say, day-to-day -day basis? I would like to uh, share one story I had. I was talking to the CIO of the Ministry of Justice in France. And the guy shared during a dinner, he said, but Maxime, there is something quite funny because uh, people need to understand that we have our, he called it big boats, like the big long projects. So he called it like big ships, you know? And it will, give, I would say it will take three years time to deliver these projects. And people need to understand that automation is a way to continue to deliver services on the way to these big projects. And I do believe it was a pretty, I would say, fair uh, assessment. And if we want your people to focus more time on complex, I would say, ask to your agents, and we, even us, I mean, we know the experience. You want to call social security, you want to call the healthcare, you want, and you have some complex uh, call. This, you need an agent in front of you because you cannot automate this. This is impossible. You need to have an interaction, and this is important. On the other hand, what you want is to automate all the, I would say, low added uh, tasks. Because first, I think it's quite depressing as a people. We are not robots here. We are smart. We have a brain. We need to use this brain to make it happen and to, I would say, bring high level of service. And in the meantime, if you give them the capacity just to lower down the workload, I think it would be uh, very important to reduce the backlog and to increase the focus. Sorry, I don't know. Ah, okay, now it come back, okay. So just to finish, we are working with a lot of different references. I'm here because I want to create the link and for me it's a big opportunity to tell you that if you want to, I would say, meet some of these organizations, so I put some 
name in Portugal, in Spain, but I, I mean, I cannot put everything. I did that this morning, to be honest with you. <laughs> I just copy and paste some logos. Uh, but it's all the people I, uh, I met, except in Portugal, because it's the first time for me. Uh, but two examples I would like to point it out. I was talking about the Ministry of Justice, just to give you some, I would say, ideas that we cannot have without you. Let's be clear. Today, we are providing a service, but we don't have the idea. So the Ministry of Justice came back to us and said, okay, we do have a lot of clerks. The clerks are the people, you know, who are typing the text. So if you had some experience, I did have in my uh, long time ago, but you go in front of the judge and there is someone typing it. Okay, these people are typing what we are saying live without any added value. And they came to us and say, why we cannot automate? Because these people are typing and after they need to copy and paste in one system and in another system, etc." So actually, they had this idea, and now it's a bot who is capable, I would say, to replicate everywhere in the Ministry of Justice to be sure that now, moving from, a, I think, one file or case uh, take, used to take 10 hours, and now it will take only 10 minutes. So could you imagine just the, I would say, the improvements? It's, it's huge. Uh, another idea I would like to share with you is the city of uh, Copenhagen. Uh, for the employment. So they use actually every agent now assisted by a digital agent. So we don't talk about RPA, it's front office automation here. And uh, they do have a little digital agent that is, I would say, taking care about every employment request that is basics. Normally they have a peak, you know, uh, at during May, June and July because they need, for example, to work on the pay for the holidays, you know, so there is this payout system, and they should hire 40 people to look after that. And now they don't need to hire these people, so it's external people, huh? they needed to add. So they just use the same number of people, assisted by digital agents, and they can deliver a very good service. Uh, we can, and the last but not least, uh, because you don't know perhaps it's family allocation, I think this one, perhaps you know it. Uh, so it's very linked to, and ACOS is social security, ACOS. Uh, every, I mean, each of these customers, it's quite big what they, I think, managed to do, especially during the pandemic. You know, during the pandemic, we needed to, you, I would say as a public sector, needed to provide the same level of service in a moment where everything was stuck. And I would say the capacity that the digital assistant or automation, call it how you want to call it, can give in this kind of moment, it can be a peak of activity, it can be this kind of period that, of course, we don't want to live again, but that's very important to, to keep in mind that uh, there is this, I would say, low task that can be automatized, free some time for complex situation, and this is what we have done in ACOS. Uh, for the CNAF family allocation, you know, the rights, when you extend the rights of one family because you have some, anyway, regulation that is new. This is something we didn't talk about. How automation can bring agility when the legislation is changing. So suddenly you have a, a big change in legislation and you have to make your legacy system change. You cannot, no, it's not possible. The, your legacy system cannot change in one month. So how automation can give you this agility layer. Thank you very much. Now I'm gonna, who talk best than I would say our customers. So I'm gonna let the mic to Glenn. Glenn. Thank you.